Welcome to vlog number six. It is Saturday 9th of January. In my last video, I spoke about ice cream now versus a fitness goal in the future, whether it's getting in shape or running a personal best or just playing sports with your kids without looking like crap. Those things are all 10 times more appealing than junk food. But because they are further away, perspective distorts how you see them and they seem lesser. Why so small? <laughs> Hence the ice cream can win, which is very frustrating. What I've learned this week is even more frustrating. Not only can you not see how appealing an appealing thing is in the future, you can't see how horrible a horrible thing is in the future either. Because if you could, I would have seen this week coming, dealing with the effects of lugging around excess weight, not having trained for a while, and over Christmas, instead of stuffing myself constantly, I would have set some sort of, I don't know, daily calorie limit where I would stop at 6,000 or something, which would have been about 11 a.m. Nothing I ate was as good as this is bad. And here's the really dumb thing. I said I learned that, I didn't learn it, I've been reminded of it, because I've known it from every other time I've done it before, which has been many, over and over and over. I cannot seem to break the loop. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Still, let's not dwell on the past, hey? At least until it just comes around again. On the bright side, exercise has taken place, a decision on the Iron Man has been reached, and the most exciting thing to adorn the garage in a while has arrived. Now, the week began with me hoping that my extra Christmas weight might actually be an advantage. There aren't many sports where more body fat is a benefit, but I thought I may have found one downhill Zwift racing. The plan was simple, to use my 108 seasonal kilograms to fly down the Radio Tower Hill race and crush everything in sight. That was the plan, but as we watch this back, you will see the first problem. Now, if you aren't a regular user of Zwift, to explain, this is a race down from one of the highest points on the Zwift map, the Radio Tower. It is the section with the steepest descents on the whole map. It is right up in the clouds. So what the hell is the sea doing up here? That is right, we had to ride up the hill first. The one thing that is gonna make me good in the race, my weight, is used against me from the start. I'm gonna start the race exhausted. There is no sporting equivalent of somebody overcoming such a massive disadvantage and succeeding. Not outside of the Kumite, at least. So we ride all the way up this stupid hill. It takes ages, it takes me an hour to get to the top, in fact. An hour of climbing solidly. That's before I can start the race. We all gather at the top of the hill, and then here is the plan. The idea is that one at a time, a nominated rider in each category, A, B, C, D, I'm a C category rider, says go, 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 and that category all races down the hill together. How did that go? It sucked. I wasn't really paying attention, it's slightly my fault. I started right at the back. It wasn't even clear when to start, really. I was just watching what other people were doing. You can see the leaders already disappearing around the corner before I even get going. And I do start to work through the field, but there is just too much to do at this point. I mean, I should have stuck on the back wheel of the leaders, and I'm just working through the middle of the pack here. Even once we get onto the really steep sections where I can tuck and still gain speed because of my weight, I am flying past people, but there is just too many. There's just too much to do. That is the story all the way down. I'm going over 100 kilometers per hour and accelerating because of my weight, not even having to pedal half the time, but it's not enough. All the way, my plan was burst of power, tuck, gather speed, but the trouble is at 80, 90 kilometers per hour, the extra power required to go just another four or five kilometers per hour and overcome the wind resistance is insane. If somebody has broken away and is remotely quick ahead of you, they are staying ahead of you. I mean, I pass loads of people, but the three guys that had shot off from the beginning, they are pretty much uncatchable up in front. When we get close to the bottom, I have an okay sprint finish. I'm pushing 900 watts over the line, and I certainly beat the little group that I'm in, but there's those three guys that they were ahead, they crossed the line about six seconds ahead of me. 
It was annoying. I should have been up there with them fighting for a decent position. Instead, I'm now at the bottom of the hill realizing that my monstrous overeating didn't yield anything of value. The only chance it might have done is gone. And I'm still fat. I made a huge tiny mistake. So a couple of days later, I jump back on the bike. I do another race on Zwift. This time I do a 7K sprint, a short race. The sort of thing that before Christmas, I would have hoped to have done very, very well at. I would expect to have come top four or five, maybe even looking for a podium place on a quick, fast race. I'm thinking it will boost my confidence, be a great way to get back into it after that hill nonsense. It does not go that way. It starts off actually all right. One kilometer in, it's all going well. I'm excited, I'm up with the guys at the front of the race. Coach Greg is in the race, the sun is out. It's all looking good. Until we hit a hill and I am dumped like a sack of Christmas garbage, I feel absolutely rubbish. I even considered quitting the race at one point. That's how bad it gets. In the end, I salvage the tiniest victory ever of sorts by dumping this lot that I'm riding with with a sprint finish, but come on. I end up 21st out of 40. 21st, that is below average. I should resign from my own YouTube channel. And then a couple of days ago on Thursday, I do stage one Tour de Zwift. Tour de Zwift is basically a massive group ride done by thousands of people on Zwift at different times. You just pick a session, you jump in, and with hundreds of others, off you go. I'm doing a category A distance, Categories not based on your wattage performance, categories are based on distance. So category A is the longest and probably done by more category A and B riders than any other, but it's about distance. I'm happy to do a longer distance. Off I go, I'm told one hour, sub one hour ideally is a reasonable time, that's my target. And I miss it, I miss it by a minute, which just kind of sums up my week really. So Zwift, great. So I'm going to ride today, Saturday, going to ride tomorrow, Sunday, and then Monday off, because on Tuesday, it's the big one. Tuesday night, I am racing in my first ever team race for the Bolt Race team that I'm now riding with. This is a group of guys that asked me to ride before Christmas, having seen me do some rides uh, reasonably well. And I said, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. So on Tuesday night, they are expecting a certain caliber of cycling performance to be delivered. And based on recent uh, rides, they may get less than they had been hoping for. We will see, I guess. Stanley! Oh. What? You gotta be kidding me! Oh. If I am fired from my first race team by Wednesday morning, we'll know it hasn't gone to plan. So that's cycling. As for running, running's been all right. I've done some very, very short, easy jogs with Jenna and the dogs over the last couple of weeks, so I have been running, but yesterday was my first proper run. Me and Nixon got out, went and did 10K. First proper run of the new year. How did that go? How did that go? I'll tell you, because I've literally just finished it. We did just over 10K, just under 50 minutes. So about right for what was supposed to be a slow, steady 10. So that's all good, but Mixed bag really, because although I feel okay, in fact, after just two minutes warm down, I feel pretty much fully recovered. I could do it again. I don't feel optimal. I feel, I don't know what the word is. What's the word, dog? Sluggish, nice. Sluggish is how we feel. Funny enough, before Christmas, I did plenty of runs with a weighted vest on that was way heavier in extra weight than I'm carrying now in extra fat. Yet then I felt powerful and strong, like I was competing against and beating that extra weight. Whereas now I feel like, although it's less weight, I feel more weighed down by it, more affected by it. It's weird, even the weather. Before Christmas, I was longing for the rain without sounding too Gogginsy, or the snow even. In fact, I was just thinking it'd be amazing if it snowed, to go and run in the snow, to take on and beat mother nature and yet now it's a bit nippy i've got my thermal gloves on i'm cold i'm just longing for it to be nice and sunny again so yeah i just feel i feel unable to take on challenges the way i was doing just a couple of weeks ago uh, it does drill in how the joys of overeating and doing bugger all are 
not worth this. The what's the opposite of joy? Deep, deep sadness. That is the opposite of joy. On the bright side, everything's now back on track. The training's on track. The diet is very much on point. In fact, I'm losing weight rapidly. By Monday, I'll be down to just a few kilograms above where I want to be. So much of that excess weight from the beginning of the week was just water retention, inflammation from having eaten so much junk so fast over Christmas and shedding just a few kilograms of body fat over the coming weeks with my normal training will be absolutely achievable. So no problem there. And talking of normal training, what is going to be coming up is different to what I had planned because I have made a decision that the Ironman in Hamburg in June this year is not happening for me. To be clear, Ironman still say it's going ahead. In fact, they just the other day took another instalment out of my account to pay for it. So they are happy that it's going to run. But here is my thinking. There are only three possibilities. One, coronavirus resolves itself rapidly. Social distancing is over, travel restrictions are over, and everything is back to normal, and the event takes place. It seems a little bit of a Hollywood ending, but I suppose it is feasible. Number two is that coronavirus does get dealt with, but the way it appears to be getting dealt with at the moment, which is rather slowly, roll out the vaccine is not going anywhere near as fast as they would like, the number of infections are through the roof, enforcement is going crazy. In fact, to give you an idea on enforcement, here in the UK at the moment, I have a local WhatsApp group where somebody asked if they could take their kids to a local nature reserve, is that allowed, they said, and I said, yeah, it's fine. In fact, I jog around there occasionally. I was told that jogging around there from my house, which is a, a few miles to get to, was pretty much single-handedly causing infection rates to spike in the southeast of England by somebody, ironically, who typing that into their phone probably did more exercise with their thumbs than their body had done all year. That is where we are at, though. It is a very odd time. And given that, will Germany, Hamburg, in a few months' time, want thousands of people descending on it? No, I think they'll cancel it. Of course, option three is something in the middle. Maybe it goes ahead, but with restrictions, maybe less spectators. I've run a few races towards the end of last year that were run like that. COVID friendly races and they happen, that's good, but they are very much a lessened experience because of the regulations. And that gives me two problems. First of all, I want to run it the way it is supposed to be run, in front of thousands of people with spectators. I want gender to come and watch. I want to be able to take a few days in Hamburg afterwards to wander around freely and just have a normal event. I would rather wait an extra year and run a normal race than do some sort of half-hearted attempt to get it in under the regulations. And even if I knew that it was going to take place normally in June this year, I can't really train. The pools are shut here and they're going to stay shut until March. I wanted to join an open water swimming club to get some practice in that. There's none of that going on. I had a couple of duathlons, small scale events booked for March and April practice. They're already cancelled. None of it is happening. I can't even jog to the park without somebody taking five minutes away from munching on their pizza to call the authorities on me. My training is going to be miles off. So it is going to have to be 2022. Now, if I was a triathlete, I could just keep on training regardless. It wouldn't make any difference. But I'm not. I'm not anything really, I'm just a, that looks like fun, I'll have a go at that. And for the Ironman status of having run an Ironman, I was happy to sacrifice other things to get that done. But only for a while. I'm not going to carry on Ironman training right the way through until June of next year. Not when I can put it on hold, pick it up again in the autumn of this year, and then run through properly until next summer. And it does need sacrificing stuff for, unfortunately, it's just the way it is. It is contrary to the other type of training I like to do, especially the heavy lifting, it doesn't go well with that. It chews up my time massively. It conflicts with simple stuff like wanting to race on Zwift. I can't do that if my schedule says I've got a six hour bike ride I should be doing instead. It is a bit all or nothing. My regular training is stuff that will see me doing a fast 10K trail run, or being able to jump on the bike and do a fast, swift race over a half hour distance or something, allows me to lift on a regular basis and maintain the size that I want to maintain. Now those things aren't actually pretty compatible with each other either, 
but they aren't terribly incompatible. They work okay. They don't take up huge amounts of time, and importantly, they do leave me with a good, I believe, overall element of fitness in each discipline. There are enough fitness YouTubers already that can't do a park run, we don't need another one. Iron Man, though, is something else. Four, five, six hour bike rides running for hours on end pretty much every day. It is massively time consuming. And again, over a reasonable distance, six, seven months, for that status of having done an Iron Man, I'm happy to forfeit everything to get that done. But from now until next summer, it's not gonna happen. Especially as I don't believe it provides me with a necessarily enhanced level of fitness anyway. In fact, at 220 pounds, I might be pushing it a bit. I'm constantly working on injury prevention. I've been very lucky, haven't been hurt, but that won't necessarily stay that way forever. I'm tired all the time. I'm constantly hungry, craving carbohydrates all the time, which makes it very hard to maintain the diet. This summer, with the training I'm now gonna be doing, I will be a different sort of fitness, but I don't believe I'm gonna be less fit. So I've got the new training program worked out pretty much, 80, 90% done, it's all in my head. I need to finalize a few things. I'll go through it on my next vlog. And lastly, the most exciting thing to happen this week, Sticky Back Blackboard. That Tour de Zwift ride I did the other day, hundreds of people all at once riding simultaneously from around the world over the magic wireless stuff. But this, this is the cleverest thing that I've seen all week. It's a blackboard that you stick on the wall. Simple things, simple minds. I said before, goals and objectives that are far away are too small. Bring them up close, make them in front of your face. And I'm gonna do that using that. I'm covering, I've already started, I'm covering my cupboards with basically blackboard so I can write my program, write my objectives on there. When I walk in this door, every day, boom, what I need to get done and how I need to get it done is up there and it's prominent and it's unavoidable. In fact, let me show you. It is prominent, it is in my face. The second I walk in the door, all these cupboards are gonna be displaying stuff that is gonna to have to compete against temptation. My goals, my objectives, my training program, and it does have to compete because the temptation is constant. It is non-stop, that loop that I cannot get out of is ever present. In fact, let me show you what's happened this morning. Tiffin. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? My kid has been cooking Tiffin again. What the hell have I raised?